Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Did you know that your favorite snack could be quietly sabotaging your health goals? Think about those crispy chips, those delicious cookies, or that satisfying fried chicken, oh my God. Even sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and peanuts, while tempting, are loaded with significant amounts of omega-6 fatty acids. Now, omega-6 fatty acids aren't bad. In fact, along with omega-3s, they're considered essential fats. This means our bodies need them for vital functions, but we need to get them from foods we can't produce them ourselves. These fats are like building blocks for our cells, playing a crucial role in inflammation, brain function, and heart health. But here's the thing. It's not just about eating enough omega-6 and omega-3s. The balance between them is what truly matters for our long-term health and well-being. Remember those tasty foods and snacks we talked about earlier? The chips, cookies, and fried foods, peanuts, and sunflower seeds? They're not alone. Many processed foods and fast foods and even seemingly healthy options are overflowing with omega-6 fatty acids. Now, to recap, both omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids are considered essential fats. Our bodies can't produce them. We need to get them from our diet. They act as crucial building blocks for cells, playing roles in inflammation, brain function, and heart health, but the key lies in striking a balance. For most of human history, our ancestors maintained a healthy equilibrium between omega-6 and omega-3s, consuming them in a ratio of approximately one to one. However, the modern Western diet has thrown this delicate balance completely out of whack to 20 to one or higher at times. What's behind this dietary imbalance? Several factors are at play. Number one, industrial seed oils. The first culprit is the rise of industrial vegetable production from crops like safflower, corn, and sunflowers. These oils are abundant in omega-6 fatty acids and have permeated processed foods, fast food, and even home cooking, making it challenging to avoid them. You don't even know you're taking them. You don't even know you're eating them. You're thinking you're eating healthy, but you're not. Let me give you some examples of the difference in the ratio. It's supposed to be one to one or four to one is normal. Safflower oil, a ratio of 133 to 1. Corn oil, 83 to 1. Sunflower oil, 40 to 1. That's just some examples. Another contributor is the shift in livestock feed. Instead of grazing on grass, as nature intended, many animals are now raised on grain-based diets. This change leads to meat and dairy products that are significantly lower in omega-3s. Adding to this problem are consumption of naturally omega-3 rich foods such as oily fish or certain vegetables, has declined, further widening the gap between omega-6 and omega-3s. This drastic imbalance has serious implications for our health, potentially setting the stage for chronic inflammation and a cascade of health issues. Now, let's explore these consequences in more detail. Why does this ratio actually matter? A balanced intake of omega-6 and omega-3s essential fatty acids, EFAs, is crucial for human health. While both types of fatty acids are necessary, the ratio between them is particularly significant. Human beings evolved on a diet with a ratio of omega-6 to omega-3s of roughly 1 to 1, as I mentioned earlier. However, the typical Western diet exhibits 15 to 1 sometimes, sometimes 20 to 1, sometimes 16.7 to 1. This imbalance contributes to the development of numerous chronic diseases. See, this is the thing. Omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids compete for the same enzymes in the body. Specifically, delta-6 desaturate. This enzyme is responsible for converting both types of fatty acids into longer chain molecules that our body can utilize. When there's an overabundance of omega-6 fatty acids, the conversion of omega-3 fatty acids can be hindered. This disruption affects the balance of fatty acid metabolism and can negatively impact different bodily functions. The good news is that you, I, we have the power to adjust our omega-6 to omega-3 ratio and take proactive steps towards improving our health. Here are some practical tips to help you achieve a healthier balance. The first step is to consciously reduce your consumption of omega-6 rich foods, primarily industrial seed oils. Processed foods, fast food, and prepackaged snacks are often loaded with omega-6 fatty acids for vegetable oils like soybean, corn oil, and sunflower oil, so cutting back on these foods is a great starting point. Also, become a label reading detective. When shopping for groceries, pay attention to the ingredient list and choose products that don't contain omega-6 rich oils. Another thing, 
Cooking at home gives you greater control over the ingredients and all you use. Opt for healthy alternatives like olive oil or avocado oil, which are lower in omega-6s. If you eat meat, you should choose grass-fed meat and dairy products. Animals raised on pasture have a more favorable omega-6 to omega-3 ratio in their meat and milk compared to um, the grain-fed counterparts. At the same time, it's important to boost your intake of omega-3 fatty acids. This is what I do. Oily fish, such as salmon, mackerel, and sardines, and herring, are excellent sources of long-chain omega-3s, EPA, and DHA. Aim for at least two servings of fatty fish per week. If you don't consume enough fatty fish, talk to your doctor about whether an omega-3 supplement might be the right thing for you. This is what I take. Also, plant-based sources, such as flax seeds, Chia seeds and walnuts provide ALA, another type of omega-3. While ALA needs to be converted into EPA and DHA in the body, incorporating these foods can still contribute to a healthier omega-3 intake. Pay attention to the overall composition of your diet. The optimal ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids can vary slightly depending on the individual and their health goals. A general guideline is to aim for a ratio between 1 to 1 and 4 to 1, aligning more closely to our evolutionary dietary patterns. Several studies highlight the importance of ratio in disease management. For example, cardiovascular disease, a 4 to 1 ratio was linked to a 70% reduction in total mortality in secondary prevention. Then you have colorectal cancer, a 2.5 to 1 ratio reduced rectal cell proliferation, while a 4 to 1 ratio with the same omega-3 amount had no effect. Then you have breast cancer, a lower ratio was associated with decreased risk. Then you have one of the most biggest ones, rheumatoid arthritis, a two to three to one, a two, three to one ratio suppressed inflammation. Then you have asthma, another big problem. A five to one ratio had beneficial effects, but a 10 to one ratio was detrimental. If you have specific health concern or are unsure about the best approach for adjusting your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, it's always advisable to do your own research or consult with a registered dietitian or your doctor. To conclude, it's really important to understand that omega-6 fatty acids are not the enemy. In fact, they are essential for survival. Your body needs them for important functions like blood clotting and inflammation. The problem isn't eating foods high in omega-6s, it's the imbalance that arises when we consume too many omega-6s relative to omega-3s. Think of it like a seesaw. You need both sides for it to work properly. The more omega-6s you eat, the more omega-3s you need to ingest to maintain a healthy balance. Ideally, like I said, the ratio should sit somewhere between 4 to 1 and 1 to 1, meaning for every 4 parts of omega-6, you want to at least eat 1 part of omega-3. This balance helps keep inflammation in check and supports overall health. For example, Here's a chart of foods high in omega-6s in red and omega-3s in green. If you decide to eat the red label foods, you should try to also eat a food or foods from the green labels so you don't put the ratio too far in favor of omega-6s. Maintaining a balance between omega-6 and omega-3 ratio is crucial for promoting longevity and overall health. You can take charge of your health by making gradual sustainable changes to your diet to achieve a healthier omega-6 to omega-3 balance and support whatever your health goals are. Conscious dietary choices have a powerful impact on long-term well-being. By prioritizing a balanced intake of omega-6 and omega-3s, I believe people can take proactive steps towards a healthier, longer life. As for myself, I know and feel the difference when I started doing this. I, I eat a lot of fatty fish. Uh, I started adding really what really is one of the best is sardines. Sardines is one of the highest and it's cheap. One of the highest in omega-3s. Omega-6s, you're eating omega-6s without you even realizing it. And I add sardines. I add herring. I eat Pollock fish. I eat tuna fish. I eat flax seeds. I eat a lot of walnuts. I don't eat almonds. I stay away from them because they are extremely high in omega-6s. I mean, you can eat them, but make sure you eat omega-3s or take a supplement with omega-3s. That's what I do to keep the balance in check. Let me tell you, 
Let me tell you, I feel the difference in my muscles and my joints. I feel the difference when I started doing this. When I started monitoring myself, I don't write anything down. I just watch myself. When I eat, when I eat anything that has omega-6s in it, I make sure I up my omega-3s that day. If I eat a slice of pizza, I take more omega-3 supplement. Or I eat an extra fish or something. That's, that's how I do it. I don't write everything down and count it. I just watch what I eat. Anyway, maybe this information helps you. Maybe you don't care for it. But it's the truth. This works. Have a wonderful day. And see you soon in my next video.